Good afternoon. My name is Patty D. Priest, and I work for the Kentucky Academy of Technology Education at Murray State University in Murray, Kentucky. Today we're going to be talking about Google Keep. Google Keep has been recently added to the G Suite applications and it works with Google Docs. And so it can work as a standalone application, but you can also use it as part as a tool within Google Docs. And we'll show you how to do that. Google Keep, if you're not sure what it is, it is a web-based application. It is also available as an app for your phone. I use it a lot on my phone. I have started to use it more and more um, here at the office. And I find it very helpful as far as organizing and creating lists and, and things to notes to share, um, as well as reminders. And the reminders actually work not only with Google Keep, but they work through your calendar. So if you set up a reminder in Keep, it is automatically put into your calendar. So that's pretty cool as well. So um, when you're using Google Keep, you can not only add text and checkboxes to your Keep notes, you can also add images and through the phone apps, you can add a voice note, you can add drawings, and even more. The thing to keep in mind is basically what Google Keep is, is an online digital sticky note or a bunch of digital sticky notes. So as you can see on my screen, I have uh, several different ones that are showing. You'll notice that you can color code them. You can uh, add pictures to them. You can also add labels to them. And you'll see that some of mine uh, will say personal. Some of them say Willow Pond, which is um, my husband and I do some photography, and that's the name of our, our company. And then some of them will say Kate. So um, you can add any labels you want. And again, we'll be looking at how to do that. You'll notice over on the left, you've got, um, and I am on a, a Mac, but it looks the same on a, a Windows PC. Um, it may look a little bit different when you're using it on your phone, but using the actual notes pretty much works the same. So on the left, I have, I can choose between notes and reminders. I don't think I have any reminders, so I'm not going to click there. You'll notice that my labels are listed here. One of the neat things about it is if I want to look at only Willow Pond things, I can click on the label and it will pull up everything that is labeled with that label. And I think that is really awesome. Uh, if you want to go back to all your notes, you just click on notes at the top. You can archive notes. So if there's a note that you are finished with, but you might need the information, instead of deleting it by putting it in the trash, you can archive it. Then you can go back and retrieve it if it's needed. There are settings here. You can send feedback to Google. And one of the things I've found about Google is that they are very good about listening to your feedback that you send them. So if there's something you'd like to see, um, this is the place to go and send them a message. And it usually goes to the team that is actually working on Google Keep. You'll also notice that as I scroll down, you can, besides do feedback, you can uh, look or research some help. You can uh, download the app. And this downloads the mobile app as well as the Chrome extension. The Chrome extension we'll look at in a minute too. I have it on mine. It is up here and it looks like the light bulb, just like uh, the icon on your phone. And uh, the nice thing about it is you can add a website to a Keep note. And so that's pretty cool. And then there are some keyboard shortcuts that you can use as well. If you click here, it will pop that up. Those are things for people that really like shortcuts. You know, there are shortcuts to use. Under your settings, um, you can look at your different things. You can add new items to the bottom. You can move the checked items to the bottom. Um, you can customize your reminders here um, as what morning, afternoon, and evening it is. Uh, you'll understand more about that later. You can enable sharing so that you can share your, your notes with uh, other teachers, with your students, and maybe with your husband if it's a shopping list. All right, so I'm gonna cancel that. Let's look at the notes. If I want to create a new note, you'll come to the very top and click, and basically you'll just start typing. You it notice it takes you down here, so you can start actually typing what you want in your note. Let's say I 
want to make a list of videos that I need to make. So I can say maybe Google Keep. I need to do one for Google Sites. I need to do one, and this would be for the college, but on the BYOD classroom. And so once I've got all my things out of my mind that I wanted to put, I can come back up here and say to do, put the videos to do there, and I can say I'm done. But let's look at my, some of my other options. If I want to pin it, which is all these that are up here at the top, it says they're pinned. And the way I pinned them was just to click on the little thumbtack, okay? Here I can set a reminder. Notice I can set it for later today, tomorrow, or next week. I can also pick a date and time. So I click here and I pick a different date. It gives me the calendar. Maybe I need this for the following, you know, couple weeks from now. When do I want it to remind me? I want it to remind me first thing in the morning. I can repeat it, whether it's every day or every week or every month, every year, stuff like that. And then I can save it. I'm not going to save that yet because one of the really neat things about Keep is that you can pick a place. And so if I choose this, I have to allow Google to know my location. And then let's say I want to start putting it. I want it to let me know when I'm at Murray State University. So I'm going to click that. And so as soon as I get to Murray State University, it's going to pop up and give me this note and, and remind me that I have this list. And I like this not so much maybe for, for this actual note, but if there, let's say there's something you really need to do as soon as you get to work, um, you can create a, you know, a, a, a reminder list and as soon as you walk in the door, maybe it's at school and you need to call a parent. Maybe you need to make some copies. Maybe you need to put something in Google Classroom and share it with your students. You need to add an assignment. You need to change something in an assignment. Whatever it is, you can put it there and it will remind you rather than at a time when you actually get to a location. So you can actually put in your school and it should be able to find that. Uh, the thing I use it for sometimes is my grocery list. You can put that in there and it will pop up the list as soon as I walk into, let's say, Walmart or Kroger here in Murray. So that's a, a great feature. I can also collaborate. If I want, let's say, my grocery list to share it with my husband, I can share it with him. And that way, if he decides to stop at the grocery store, if I keep it up to date, he'll be able to go in and pick up some of the things that we need rather than calling me on the phone or just not thinking about it, you know? And so, you know, that works as well. You can also share your list with your students. Maybe um, I watched uh, or read an article today on a teacher who does a uh, list with his students and they're the can-do and uh, must-do lists. And so he shares those two lists with his students. And so he can see what they are checking off and see what they still have to do and kind of keep them on track and and so you can do that you can share lists with other teachers um, and lists don't have to be checklists i've got a lot of checklists right here pinned but you'll notice my allergies and i have several um, that's not a checklist you can actually just put in text it can be sentences um, if you just put in one word my knee's been bothering me so i need to remind uh, myself to talk to my doctor about it and so I put that word in. And if it's just one word, it makes it big. So we've got lots of different options here. You can put links in here. And if you share that with a student or another teacher, then they can actually click on that link and go ahead as well. All right. So um, we've created our first list. We uh, could add a collaborator. And let's say that I want to add Jenny Kelly. And so because we have you know, are using a Google account and using our Gmail, our contacts have been populated with all these things. It'll also go into your um, personal contacts. And so those of you in Kentucky schools, you can go into contacts.google.com and you can start adding. And I do have a video on our YouTube channel that tells you how to transfer your contacts that are your personal contacts in Office 365 and move them into your contacts in Google. So I'm going to click on Jenny and I'm going to say save. And so she is now a part of this list. I could add several collaborators if I wanted to. Um, also notice that I can change the color. Each of mine down below are col different colors. 
some of my other ones down below that aren't as important aren't colors. And what I should do, and I haven't done, is all my personal ones should be a color. All my Willow Pond ones should be a color. All the ones that have to do with Kate probably should be another color. So um, it would help you be more organized rather than looking very pretty. Another thing you can do is you can add an image. You'll notice that um, on two of mine I have an image. You can't, when you go to the three little dots, it, you don't get the option to add an image when you have the drop down. But if I was to open this so that it's big, notice the image is here. And so now I could actually go and click add an image. And I don't know if I have a picture that's going to work with this, but oh, let's say we can put, um, we'll just put this little meme at the top and it's going to load it and it will be, once it's loaded, it'll be at the top of your image and you can say done. And there we have our image. So, you know, images make it look pretty and nice, but um, one of the uses that I've seen for putting images in is to create images that might say uh, first period, second period, third period, or might say for students, it might say, if, if I te teach biology, it may be an image I give them to put at the top of their list, for their, or I may put it there, then share it with them that says biology, and have them put that up there so they can quickly find from their image, from their different notes, they can actually because of the image, find what it is they're looking for very quickly. All right, so we've got our, our videos to do. We'll come open this back up. And uh, so we can add a picture. Um, we can archive it. That means it's going to be there, but it's not going to be right there on our desktop. And then we've got this drop down. We can delete the note. We can add a label. And when I click on add a label, the labels I've already created will be there. I can choose one. And let's say I say this is Kate, so I can choose this and then I can just click off of it and it's gone. Notice it now has this label. Um, I can also add a drawing and so I can click on drawing and it's basically like any other drawing tool. Um, I can choose, you know, clear the page. I can select something. I have different pens and colors, different widths things like that and so I can actually draw so all that is there you can download it then or delete it yeah. all right um, you can make a copy of it maybe you want to make a copy and archive the old one and then maybe take out your checks and stuff and do that here is where I add my check boxes and so when I click that they are now added and everyone from now on that I add will have a checkbox then you can also copy it to a Google Doc so this will actually when I click on it, it's going to ask me, uh, it's going to copy it to a doc, and I can open the doc, and there's my list. Okay, I will come back to that in just a minute. Uh, you can actually do a search through your notes, and so when you see this search up here, um, I can search through different types of things, and but I can actually just search everything, and I can type in, oops, and there are my grocery lists that have, and one is archived, notice, that have bananas in it. And it actually highlighted it on this one because I can see it. This one I can. So if I wanted to really look in here, bring this up, you can see I've crossed out or clicked on these things. The nice thing about a grocery list is all these things that are in here, if I want to add it back in, all I have to do is click on it again. And it adds it to my list. When I'm done, I click it and it deletes it. Okay, But it saves it down below. You can also search through a, uh, let's say, a, a picture that has words in it. Uh, let's say that we want to search for, and let's say I say teachers. Let's see if it'll, our teacher, I don't know if it'll pick that up or not. Aha, so it did. There's no teacher I know in this list, but teacher is a word within this document. If Google Keep can read it, it will actually allow me, uh, or allow Keep to actually search it and find it. The other thing you can do is with a document, I don't know if it'll let me do it with this, is I can uh, grab the image text and so I can click here and this is exactly what it says in the image and it's now put it here. How cool is that? Now if, if you're using the mobile version, I can't demonstrate that, you can create a voice note so when you go to take your note, and I'm going to go ahead and close this, say done, 
um, when I am back at all my notes, let's say I'm creating my note here. One of my choices here, and this is for a new list, add a picture, add a note, you know, new note with a drawing, you'll have another option here and it will be a microphone. And so you can take a voice note. It will then take your voice kind of like in Google Docs when you do the voice typing, it will then translate what you're saying into your Google, into your note in Google Keep. Um, another thing you can do is uh, in Google Docs, I'll go use this doc uh, just for this. Let's say that I want to bring something in from Google Keep without going from Keep and saying just send it to it. So, and you notice when it sent it, it sent it to here, it created a new document. Well, when I'm in a document, I can go to Tools and it has a Keep Notepad. And what it does is it brings up on the right hand side everything that's in Google Keep. So if I wanted to bring this whole thing in, I can bring it in and drop it. And now it's going to bring it in. Um, you know, the, the graphic is going to be full list and then it's going to put my list as, you know, a bulleted list and everything that was crossed out is going to be crossed out. Everything that wasn't is not. It, there's no way to undo that crossing out and things like that. So I'm going to actually, un, the only way to do it is would be to take it out. But for example, and I'm going to give you one classroom use and then the rest of them we're going to talk about um, in another video that I'll post to our YouTube channel. Um, so let's say that I want to do comments for my students. And you'll probably find when you're doing comments in a document that's, a, let's say, a paper or a project that they've worked on, that you're doing the same comments over and over again. So what you can do is you can create what I've done, and mine are very, very short just because I wanted to use an example, um, some general comments and some style comments. Now, if I don't want all the rest of these here, one of the things I can do is I can search for my tags and I, my tag, sorry, I can't type. And now it's brought up my comments. So let's say this is a sentence and I want to put a comment. Okay. Let's say the comment is this one. I can come over here, highlight this, copy it, come over here, paste it and click comment. If this is another comment that I need to do, then I can click again, click the little comment tag. But this time, let's say it's a, um, a possessive pronoun error. So I can copy this, paste it here. The ni other nice thing you can do is in your comments that you put on there, if you either have your own video or you know of a video that talks about this in case a student doesn't understand, you can put in your list the video link and it will allow you to copy and paste the link in there and the students can then click on the link and go watch that video. So that's really, really cool. Well, thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.